Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to Clean Lecture Series uh, 2022 second semester. So this time will be the last session for the correlative imaging for this semester. And after two weeks of interval, we will have a uh, interactive sessions from each country. So each country's experts will deliver us the lectures. And for today, at the end of the lecture, I'd like to introduce a, a regional training course, which will be held next week in Indonesia, Yogyakarta. And I'd like to inform how we will uh, deliver some lectures at the at next week so for today's lecture i'd like to introduce our lecturer professor hyunji liu and dr liu is currently the professor in the department of nuclear medicine Bundang, Bundang seoul national university hospital dr liu has accumulated outstanding achievements in the research of oncology nuclear medicine so today, Dr. Yi Liu will deliver us a lecture regarding correlative imaging and lymphoma. So what uh, the uses of PET in lymphoma imaging will be delivered by Dr. Liu. So please welcome Dr. Liu. Thank you for the kind introduction. So can you see the slide and can you hear my voice? Let's try to Thank you. Okay. So, um, I am Hanju Yu from Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. And today, for the today's TAIN lecture series, I would like to have a lecture about the correlative imaging for lymphoma. So the contents of the lecture is consist of firstly about the clinical indication of FDG PET in lymphoma. And secondly, I will uh, explain the lymphoma staging and response assessments. And also I would like to explain the FDG avidity of lymphomas. So let's start with the clinical indication of FDG PET in lymphoma. So lymphoma is the solid tumor of the immune system. It presents with the enlargement and proliferation of the lymph node or secondary lymphoid tissues. Um, uh, the lymphoma itself is a very heterogeneous group disease. So it has more than 90 subtypes in lymphoma. And also the lymphoma can be divided into the Hodgkin lymphoma and also for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And the prevalence is much more higher in non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And also lymphoma can be um, divided into nodal type and also extranodal type. And the prevalence are, there are more nodal types compared to extranodal types. The nodal type means that the lymphoma presents in the lymph node and extranodal means that the disease present outside the lymph node. And also the lymphoma is divided into the aggressive type and indolent type based on the behavior of the tumor. So uh, based on the NCCN guideline, the, there are many clinical indications for FDG PET CD in lymphoma. So we can use the FDG PET CD for the pretreatment staging. And also we can assess the bone marrow involvement by using the FDG PET for Hodgkin lymphoma and also for the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And also we can use the FDG PET CD for the radiotherapy planning. And also we can use FDG PET CD for biopsy guiding in suspected transformations. Also, we use the FDG PET for response assessment of lymphoma. So during the treatment, um, we can assess the treatment response. We, we can uh, assess whether it has a good response to the chemotherapy or a bad response to the chemotherapy during the treatment. And also we can assess the treatment response at, after end of the, the treatment. So we can predict the prognosis of the, the patients. And also we can diagnose and restraging the lymphoma uh, when, it is, when it is relapsed. So 
FDG Pet City has a very um, various uh, role in the um, for the clinical um, application for the in the lymphoma. <clears throat> And I would like to exp explain the role of FDG PET CT for the assessment of bone marrow involvement. Um, for the fifth large B cell lymphoma, PET's FDG PET CT is complementary to the to bone marrow. So when the FDG PET is positive in bone marrow, the bone marrow biopsy is, it is bone marrow biopsy may not be needed based on the NCCN guideline. There, if there is a like a if there is an irregular uh, multifocal um, FTG PET uptake in the bone marrow in the skeletal lesions, um, the bone marrow may be assumed to be in, have an involvement of lymphoma. And when the bone marrow is negative, but, but there is an unexplained cytopenia other than anemia are present, the bone marrow biopsy may be performed. So if a PET CT is performed, a bone marrow biopsy is no longer indicated for the Hodgkin lymphoma, and bone marrow biopsy is only needed for diffuse large B cell lymphoma if the PET is negative, and identifying a discordant histology is important for patient management. So, as you can see in this slide, this, the FDG PET can be uh, complementary to the bone marrow biopsy. And also the FDG PET can be used for the treatment response, response assessment of chemotherapy for the lymphoma. So we can uh, take a FDG PET before the treatment for the staging, and we can take a FDG PET uh, during the treatment. And also we can take a FDG PET uh, after finishing the cy cyto uh, chemotherapy. So uh, when 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 we take an interim pet during the treatment, if the lesion, um, the lymphoma lesion, like here, if 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 it it, it persists, if has a it, if it has a persistent hypermetabolism or it increase, we can say that this uh, this patient is non-responder. It means this patients have uh, the chemotherapy has uh, no uh, effect for this patients. But if the patients have this kind of lymphoma before before the treatment, but if the patients have a um, um, like. If this, this PET positive lesions disappeared in the interim or end of treatment FDG PET, we can say that this uh, patients responded to the chemotherapy. So we, by using the FDG PET, we can uh, assess the treatment response of lymphoma for the chemotherapy. Um, um, I would like to do, introduce the concept of PET adaptive therapy. The PET adaptive therapy is a response adaptive therapy using the FTG PET. Um, by using the FTG PET, we can predict the outcome of the PET therapy. So by using the interim PET, which is the PET during the uh, um, treatment, it allows the rapid testing of new approach for high-risk patients and those with unsatisfactory response to the existing treatments. So, this pet adaptive by using this kind of interim pet, we can guide therapy de-escalation or escalation. So, for example, if the patient has a two cycle, two cycle of some kind of chemotherapy, and and if and the patient if the patient took an interim pet, and if the pet was positive, um, if the I mean. The, I mean, if the, the, the lymphoma lesion persists, then we can make an escalation of the chemotherapy to improve disease control and may improve the mortality. But if the, um, the PET positive lesion disappeared, maybe we can use, uh, maybe make, make a de-escalation de of the chemotherapy to retain the efficacy and can reduce the mortality. So by using this kind of interim PET, uh, we can uh, overcome the over-treatment in good responder or under-treatment in pro responder. So the FTG PET has a role to guide the therapy de-escalation or escalation. So this provides an opportunity to personalize the approach to the therapy to achieve the best balance between the efficacy and toxicity. So then I would like to introduce the lymphoma staging. Um, historically, um, there, um, there was a, an ever classification in 1971 
And there was a couple modified ANEVR classification for the lymphoma staging. And also there was the imaging based response criteria. So there was a revised testing criteria in 2007, and there was a double criteria in 2009, and there was a Lugano classification in 2013. And this Lugano classification is the classification which formally incorporated FDGPAT into the standard staging and response evaluation for FDGPAT of its lymphomas. And also, because there was a like uh, the, there was development of immunomodulatory therapy, there uh, there was a RIRIC or RESIL criteria which helps the um, staging classification of the lymphoma after the immunomodulatory therapy. So I would like to introduce the staging systems and criteria. So. The cost wall modified ANEVR classification of lymphoma, which was um, introduced at 1989, um, this divide the lymphoma into the four stages. So when the there when there is a single lymph node lesion or one extra lymphatic site, we can say that there is uh, the stage of lymphoma is um, stage is one. But if there is a two or more lymph node lesion in the same side of diaphragm, or there is a local extra empathic extension plus one or more lymph node region, same side of diaphragm, same side of the diaphragm, we can say it has a stage two. But if there is a, a lymph node involvement lesion in the both side of diaphragm, we can say it has a stage three. And if there is a like extra lymphatic over organ involvement, we can say there is a um, there it is a stage four. And also in the cold modified and ever classification system, they use a suffix. So if there is a no B symptom, they use the suffix A. And if there is a B symptom like a weight loss or fever or sweat, they use the suffix of B. And if there is a bulky tumor, they are, they use the suffix of X. So um, um, simply, if um, by dividing the uh, by the the risk by um, 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 by dividing the by the, the diaphragm, we can stage we can stage a lymphoma involvement to stage one if if there is a um, lymphoma lesion in the same side of the diaphragm stage one two and if there is a um, both side involvement between the diaphragm, we can say it has a stage three, and if there is an extra lymphatic involvement, we can say it has a stage four. And the Dovell five point Dovell five point scale, scale is important important for the nuclear medicine physicians because um, it helps to um, it helps uh, clinicians to assess the treatment response uh, based on FDG capacity. So um, by um, based on the FDG PET uh, imaging finding, we can uh, divide the lymphoma uh, score into one to five. So if there is a no FDG uptake in the um, um, of in the uh, lymphoma patients, we can score the the this um, patient has a score one and based on the double five point scale. But if the the lymphoma lesion, the highest lymphoma uptake lesion, has a uptake, but if it is lower than the blood pool mediastinal blood pool uptake, then we can say that the score is that this lymphoma patient has a double score too. And if the, the F lymphoma lesion has a uptake higher than mediastinum, but lower than liver uptake, we can say that this patient has a double score of three. And if the patients have a, a uptake um, above the liver uptake, then we can score that it has a double score four. And if the patients have a significantly um, higher uptake than liver, or it has, if the patient has a new lesion, we can say this patient has a double score of five. So this scoring system is um, used for the initial staging and assessment of the treatment response of, of the lymphoma. Um, so if we, we should uh, some uh, mem memorize this um, sports, um, points, five point scaling system. So as I explained in the previous slide, uh, as you can see in this figure, this patients initially had a lymphoma involvement in these lesions, 
but after the treatment, um, the lymphoma involved lesion are disappeared. So this pain, we can say that this patient have a double score one after the treatment. And for example, for this patient initially have a lymph node involvement here, but after the chemotherapy, this patient have a still have a, we can see the lymph node here, but the uptake is lower than the blood pool uptake. So we can say that this patient have double score two. And for this patient, this patient still have a lymph node here, but this uh, uptake is uh, uh, lower than liver, but the higher than blood pool. So we can say this patient have a double score three. three. And, and for this patient, uh, this patient still have a lymph node and the lymph node uptake itself is higher than liver. So we can say this patient have a double score four. And for, for this patient, this patient still have a very, very high uptake lesion here. So we can say this patient have a double score five. So we can divide the, um, the lymphoma involvement based on double criteria five point scaling system. Then this can be used for the treatment assessment of lymphoma patients. And the Lugano classification, which was introduced in 2013, this Lugano classification system is of uh, the system which formally incorporated FDG PET into the standard staging and response evaluation for the FDG orbit lymphoma. So um, based on the FDG PET finding, we can um, decide whether the lymphoma is involved in these organs or not. So if there is an increased uptake in the lymph node in FDG PET city, we can say that this patient has a lymph node involvement. Um, and also for the um, spleen, in the, if the, the patient has a diffuse uptake or solitary mass or miliary regions or nodules in the FDG PET cities, we can say that this, this patient has a spleen involvement. And also, if the patients have a diffuse uptake or have a, some kind of mess in the liver, we can also say that this patient have a liver involvement. And, um, and the FDG PET is not uh, um, applied for the evaluation of the CNS, it's a central nervous system involvement. And um, so we cannot apply FDG PET for this. And for we can also apply FDG PET safety for other um, organ involvement, involvement, such as bone marrow involvement. So if the PET, as, as I explained in the previous slide, if the patients have a PET positive lesion in the bone marrow, like the heterogeneous uptake in the bone marrow, we can say that these patients has a bone marrow involvement. So based on the FDG PET CT finding, we can um, assess whether this patient has lymph node or spleen or liver or other um, extra lymphatic organ involvement. So the PET CT is the standard for the FDG of it lymphoma, whereas the CT is uh, indicate for non-FDG of it histologists. So, and FDG PET um, is so FDG PET can be applied, incorporated into the staging of FDG of it lymphomas. But however, there are some exceptions for. Uh, to apply the FDG PET for the staging of lymphoma. For example, for primary CNS lymphoma, there is no standard staging system. So we cannot apply FDG PET for the staging of this CNS lymphoma. And also for the cutaneous lymphoma, like mycosis fungoides or surgery syndrome, they have a different staging system. They have a different TNMB or TNM system. So we can um, not apply this um, FDG PET for the staging. And also also for the extra nodal marginal zone lymphoma, such as gastric multoma, uh, it have a also different system, system of the staging. So we cannot also uh, incorporate this FDG PET imaging for the staging of lymphoma. And also the pediatric non-Hodgkin lymphoma has their um, distinct um, um, staging systems. And also for CLL and SLL, it is dif it's difficult to apply the FDG PET for the staging of lymphoma. And the FDG PET uh, itself have a role of, of, of staging the lymphoma and FDG PET is, is superior than CT mainly for the extra nodal site involvement of lymphoma. 
Um, uh, as, I, as I explained in the previous slide, I said that um, FDG PET has a like exceptional, uh, has a low, um, I mean, the inferior role in the cutaneous lymphoma in both for the assessment of the lymphoma. Because that the reason why the, it has a um, low inferior role for the assessment because is that the cutaneous lymphoma has left has a low FDG uptake. It has it is less FDG of it of it. So the mycosis fungoides and, and surgery syndrome, the cutaneous lymphoma, as I mentioned in the previous slide, it has a different um, staging system like TNMB system and TNM system. And so this FDG PET are uh, not recommended for the um, staging, uh, recommended for the assessment of this kind of cutaneous lymphoma. However, PET-CT is recommended for the assessment of the non-mycosis fungoides or non surgery syndrome cutaneous lymphoma um, because it may, may have a higher uptake than, than this, this, kind of, this kind of mycosis fungoides or surgery syndrome. So, um, the and so and I would like to introduce the Lugano modified anever staging system for the lymphoma, which was introduced in 2014. Um, so this is um, very similar to pre uh, the staging system which I explained in the previous slide, but it has a little uh, a little bit uh, difference from the previous staging systems. So we we uh, we can um, uh, uh, divide the staging of lymphoma involvement into four stages. And as I explained in the previous slide, uh, we can say that. If there is only one node or one group of nodes, we can say it has a stage one lymphoma. And if the patient has a two or more group of lymph node enrichment in the same side of the diaphragm, diaphragm, we can say that it has a it has a stage two lymphoma. And if the patients have uh, involvement in both sides of the diaphragm, we can say it has a stage three. And if the patients have a extra lymphatic involvement such as bone marrow or liver or other extra lymphatic involvement, we can say it has a stage four. So the extent of disease can be determined by using the PET-CT for FDG avid lymphoma and uh, CT can be used for the non fdg avid histologies. And we should um, also consider the tonsil or waddling rings and spleen are considered in the nodal tissues. And also, um, the as I explained in the previous slide, um, in the previous uh, staging system, they use a suffix of A or B or X, but in the Lugano modification and over staging, they, this kind of suffix are removed. So we, we are not using this kind of suffix no more. So as you can see in these um, uh, images, um, if the, because these patients only have an involvement in one or nodal systems, so this can be this patients can be classified classified into the stage one lymphoma. And as you can see in this picture, um, this if because this have a these patients have a lymphoma involvement in both um, same side of diaphragm, we can say it has a stage two lymphoma. And for this patient, because this patient have a lymphoma involvement in different side of diaphragm, both side of diaphragm, so we can um, say this patient have a stage three lymphoma. And for this patient, this patient has a lymphoma involvement in lymph node uh, in both side of the diaphragm. And this patient also have an involvement in the bone marrow. So this patient can be divided, uh, classified, classified into the stage four lymphoma because this patient has an extra lymphatic involvement. <clears throat> And I would like to introduce the Riguano criteria for response assessment. So for the known uh, FDG outfit lymphoma, the, we can, uh, classy, uh, we can uh, assess the treatment response based on the uh, uh, finding of CT. And for FDG outfit lymphoma, we can use FDG PET CT uh, we can, for the treatment response assessment. So, 
um, all for the all lymphoma, especially for the non-SDG affect lymphoma, we can assess the treatment response um, it, based on the CT finding, and we can divide it, the treatment response into complete response and partial response and stable disease or progressive disease. Um, so based on the change of the, um, the longest transfer diameter of a lesion, um, they can be divided into this, um, this um, CL or PL or SD or PD. Uh, for the SDG of fit lymphoma, it has a different um, the treatment response um, method. So for the SDG lymphoma, we can divide it into the um, we can divide the treatment response into complete response and partial response and stable disease and progress disease. And um, and I introduced the Dovil score in the previous slide. And when the when there is uh, when the score, the lymphoma involvement, the, if when the, the Dovil score changed into the score one or two or three, we can say that these the patients have a complete metabolic response to the lymphoma. However, <clears throat> if the patients have a patient uh, score, a Dovil score of four or five, but if the patient have a reduced uptake, but it, it still have a score four or Five, we can say that this patient has a partial metabolic response, partial response. And, and for the patients who have a score, double score four or five, and no obvious change in FDG PET uptake, we can say that this patient has a stable disease. And for the patients who have a score four or five and who has a increase um, uh, increase of intensity of the lesion, informal lesion, or if the patients have a new FDG of it lesions, um, then we can say that this patient has a progressive disease. So based on the Dovil score after the treatment, um, we can um, assess the treatment response um, based on the FDG PET findings. Um, and these, um, as I mentioned, um, Dovil score one or two or three are um, um, categorized for the complete response of the treatment, but score, we should interpret score three in very care carefully because sometimes for the clinical trial involving PET, um, um, it, it maybe score three uh, means an inadequate response to the to chemotherapy, so we should interpret score three very carefully, and I will explain in this uh, about this score three in the later later slide. And also, um, um, we should uh, inter uh, carefully interpret interpret uh, the like the um, marrow marrow uptake or spleen uptake because after the chemotherapy or after uh, administration of growth factor, this kind of uh, uh, organ can be, have a extra uh, have an increased uptake, but it does not mean that that this uh, organ has a lymphoma involvement. So we should very uh, in carefully interpret the uptake in the spleen and marrow. So in based on the SNM or EANM guideline, um, they recommend to take a FDG PET um, 10 days after the chemotherapy and more than two weeks after the growth, growth factor such as GCS FL administration. So we should carefully interpret the um, uptake in the spleen or bone marrow after after this kind of chemotherapy or growth factor administrations. And also uh, recently there was a very um, a big development in the immunotherapy. So immunotherapy is a type of cancer treatment which helps immune system to fight the cancer. So like um, by blocking the uh, PDL1, uh, it, 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 it inhibit the, um, the cancer to is cancer escape from the T cell attack. And also we also, there is a like CAR T cell, CAR T, T, CAR -T cell ter therapy, which, uh, is a, which is the method uh, engineering test T cells. And it, by um, um, engineering the uh, chimeric antigen, antigen receptor into the T cells, this CAR T cell can bind to the cancer and kill the cancer cells. So by this kind of immunotherapy is very, um, has a recent development. And also we should, um, this kind of therapy are also applied for the lymphoma. So we should uh, carefully interpret the lymphoma patients uh, who had this kind of th therapy. Um, so I would like to introduce um, 
some staging system and treatment response after this kind of therapy for FDGPT in lymphoma. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, um, we use a checkpoint inhibitor or chimeric antigen receptor CAR T cell therapy for, we can use this kind of therapy for the lymphoma, but we should be careful uh, for the pseudo progression or metabolic flow phenomenon. This kind of thing, um, this kind of um, phenomenons can be happen after the, this kind of immunotherapy as, and we can misinterpret the patients um, because, because because if this deficient, this kind of lymphoma patient ha can have a metabolic flare or pseudo progression. So um, we should be uh, very careful to interpret uh, this kind of uh, FTG PET imaging in lymphoma after, the, this, after this kind of treatment. So, um, novel, so um, the, by using the FTG PET, uh, we can refine the as assessment of response to immunotherapy for lymphoma patients. And the FTG PET has a role to assist in detecting the immune-related side effects. So as you can see in these images, um, this is the image FTG PET images who has a, who uh, the baseline FTG PET images prior to CAR T therapy. So it, as you can see in these images, there is a very uh, multiple lymph node involvement um, before the CAR T therapy. And after the CAR T therapy, there is there was a, a more I mean uh, there is an increase of the abnormal retroperitoneal lymph node. So there was a very a little uh, retroperitoneal lymph node. But after the CAR T therapy, there was a um, like increased metabolism in the retroperitoneal lymph node, as you can see in this slide. So some people might say that. So this patient has a progressive disease after the CAR T therapy, but actually, uh, this patient's um, this this lymphoma le lesion was uh, fully resolved in the for further disease course. So this uh, retroperitoneal lymph node was actually the pseudo progression. So so we should very uh, carefully interpret the FDG PET images after the immunotherapy, such as CAR T therapy. And also, uh, FTG PET can FTG PET can de detect the immune-related adverse adverse refer adverse event after the um, immunotherapy. So, as you can see in this uh, FTG PET images, there is a um, intense uptake in the thyroid or lung, or the um, lymph mediastinal lymph node, or pericardium, or the colon. And this is the immune-related adverse event adverse event after the immunotherapy. So this patient has a thyroiditis, pneumonitis, sarcoid light reactions, and pericarditis, and colitis after the immunotherapy. So we can uh, detect the immune-related adverse event after, after the immunotherapy by using the FDG PET. So um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, um, because there is a like pseudo progression or the metabolic flare after the immunotherapy, we should very, very, uh, do very carefully interpret the treatment result response of lymphoma after the immunotherapy. So uh, the people uh, introduced the RIRI criteria at 2016, uh, which is the lymphoma response to immunomodulatory therapy criteria. Um, this criteria adopted intermediate response, the IEL system. So Based on this really criteria, um, um, they adopted this intermediate category. So if the patients are in, in this uh, intermediate response category, um, the patients are uh, recommended to, to re repeat the FTG PET after two, 12 weeks after, after the this intermediate after the intermediate response. So uh, this means that the patients has should um, we, we, this, this means that we should delay the uh, determination of this treatment response after 12 weeks and re-evaluate the treatment response. So if the patients are in the intim intermediate response criteria based on the CT uh, diameter finding, or if, the, if there was an increase in FTG PET uptake in one or more lesions, these are classified into the intermediate category one or two or three, and the patients are 
uh, uh, recommended to take uh, FDG PET or CT, the uh, correlative imaging at 12 weeks after. And if the patients, um, if the uh, I think some, uh, okay. <laughs> And if the patients uh, have an uh, increase, um, increase in size, increased size, if the patients have uh, like a new reason in the FTG PET, or if the patients have a uh, like uh, increase in diameter of tumor lesion in this criteria, then we can say it has a real P progress disease. So these really uh, modifications are uh, applied to this kind of intermediate response criteria system to prevent early uh, determination of the um, pseudo progression. So as you can see in this uh, figure, actually this patient have a increase of these lung lesions after the immune immunotherapy, but after the restaging walk-up, this lesion was decreased. So actually this patient was not progress this disease and this um, is, it, it is classified. And also in this, in this figure, also this <clears throat> patients also had a like, um, it also, this show the pseudo progression of the lesion because because uh, there was a new lesion in mediastinal lesions, but it is disappeared. And also, this patient was also um, uh, classified cla classified into the inter intermediate response, but actually this lesion was also disappeared. So this this um, slide shows the pseudo progression uh, image of the pseudo progression of the um, lymphomas. <clears throat> And also there was another um, response evaluation criteria systems. Um, there was a RACIL um, criteria in 2017. Um, this is the um, uh, response uh, based on the existing response evaluation for solid tumor resist uh, 1.1. So the primary goal of, goal of this RACIL classification is to simplify the Lugano classification for lymphoma. So it is resale system uh, only use the parameter of great, great transverse diameter. And also they only use the uh, maximum three target lesion. And um, for this resale criteria system, PET CT result was um, not taken into consideration in the net resale study. And also they applied the additional minor response category for the treatment response. So as you can see in this table, um, we can divide the response into CR, PR, SD, and PD. And additionally, for the RACIL uh, criteria system, they adopted ML, the minor um, minimal response systems. So based on the change of the diameter of the target lesion, they, it can be divided into the CR, PR, ML, SD, and PD. And as I mentioned, the, um, they did not uh, 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 considered the, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the FTG PET CT result was not taken into the consideration in the RACIL study. So in the RACIL criteria systems, um, if the, uh, the Deville score of the FTG PET uptake of lymphoma is four or five, um, is, it is in the criteria of PL, ML, or SD, and PD. And when it is only, when the Deville score is um, one or two or three, um, it, 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 is classified, it is classified into the complete res response criteria. However, the uh, the alone, the FTG PET alone is not sufficient, and they need uh, additional uh, more than thirty percent of decrease of the sum of longest diameter for for the target lesion. So, if the patient have a double score lower than three and also have a decrease in diameter, we can say that this uh, this patient have a complete response to complete remission of lymphoma based on this RACIL criteria. So um, as I show, mentioned in the previous slide, uh, I explained the um, Lugano classification system and Russell classification system. So um, and they, the Lugano system and Russell class, classification system incorporate into 
incorporate PET system, FDG PET into the treatment response evaluations. Then I would like to explain the FDG avidity of lymphomas. So um, I, as I mentioned in the previous slide, I said that there is a many, very, very uh, diff, uh, various kinds of subtype of lymphoma, more than 90 types of lymphoma. And this 90 of uh, this very various kinds of lymphoma has different types of FDG pet avidity. So as you can see in this slide, the, the, this kind of various kind of lymphoma has different avidity to the FDG pet. And usually the aggressive type of the lymphoma has a high avidity to the lymphoma, but the indolent type of lymphoma has usually has a low avidity to the FDG pet. As you can see in this table, the aggressive type of the lymphoma has a more than 97% of FDG pet avidity, but the indolent type have a lower FDG pet avidity. And also, the, as I mentioned in the previous um, slide, um, the, uh, the cutaneous lymphoma has a low FDG uptake. And also I said the, the maltoma, like gastric maltoma has a low FDG uptake and such as SLL or CLL has a low FDG uptake. So this kind of lymphoma has a very, um, um, has a non FDG VTT. And also, as I mentioned, the aggressive type has a high FDG VTT, but the Indolent type of lymphoma has a low FDG avidity. And also when you see the FUV, the uptake of the lymphoma in different types of lymphoma, the like the aggressive type of lymphoma or such a, or the this kind of DLBCL or the Burkitt lymphoma or this kind of lymphoma has a very high FUV value. But however, the like the malt lymphoma or SLL or subcutaneous lymphoma have a very uh, low value compared to other type of lymphoma. It has a low FDG uptake compared to other um, aggressive type of lymphoma. So um, the FDG known of it lymphoma exists about six percent of a large patient's group. And as I mentioned, the maltoma or SLL has a higher rate of non-FDG avidity and lymphoma of the skin has less FDG avidity and indolent type have less, uh, non, less FDG avidity. And uh, regarding the malt lymphoma, according to the site, the FDG avidity is higher in non-gastric type, but the gastric type have low FDG avidity. And also the mass forming type have a high FDG avidity, but the superficial type of the gastric lymphoma has low FDG avidity. Also the uh, maltoma involvement in GI tract, a gastrointestinal tract, or the multi lymphoma involvement in conjunctiva can be masked by the diffuse physiologic uptake of this kind of organ. So we should um, carefully interpret the involvement of this um, organs. So as you can see in this um, table, the FUV value of the uh, gastric involvement or the like conjunctiva involvement is very low. So we should very carefully interpret the involvement of this kind of organ by using the FDG PET. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we, um, by based on the uh, Lugano classification, we uh, uh, we say that the patient have a complete uh, response if the patient have double score one or two or three, and we say the patient have P uh, SD or PL or PD when the patient have double score four or five. But this should be we, sh we should very carefully interpret when the patient have double score three. So I would like to say um, some introduce the limitation of double five, uh, the limitation of the, the double score three. So usually the double score three is a complete metabolic response in clinical routine. We a clinical in clinical routine we um, usually consider double score three three is in um, complete CL. But in, in some clinical trial, they said this double score three is um, means the inadequate response. Uh, this is because the, there is a interreader reliability of a five point double score 
scale was is very poor because um, there is a greatest interreader variability in differentiating double score from two and three. So some some people say this patient has double score two, but some other uh, doctor can say this patient has double score three. This is because because this is this happens because there is a very real, narrow range between double score and double score three because you know the medial mediastinal blood pool and liver uptakes have a very uh, low, uh, very I mean narrow range. So uh, there can be a uh, interreader variability in um def in decide uh, deciding the double score of patients from double score two to double score three. So. There is some limitation of double score three for the treatment response of the FTG PET in lymphoma patients. So um, some um, researchers uh, introduced the concept of the delta SUV or Q quantitative PET. So delta SUV means the, the percent decrease from baseline to post treatment, the percent decrease of SUV. Um, from baseline to the post-treatment. So by, by applying this kind of delta SUV concept, um, this, this improves the inter-observer agreement um, as compared with visual analysis using the five-point scale. And um, some um, report uh, article suggests that this delta SUV approach provides better prognostic information than the five-point visual scale. So as you can see in this figure, by applying the delta SUV value for the lymphoma assessment uh, after the treatment, um, by applying the delta SUV, the, there is a more uh, statistically um, difference in the survival of the, of the lymphoma patients, as you can see in this figure and in this figure and also in this figure. So by um, dividing the, um, the treatment responses by using the, this delta FEV value, we can more, may, maybe we can more accurately or decide the treatment response and more predict the prognosis of the uh, treatment prognosis of lymphoma of these patients. And um, also we should uh, very uh, carefully uh, to say the, there is a complete response if, there, if, there, if the patient has PET or negative finding. I mean that if, if even though the PET patient have uh, no uptake in the FTG PET in the FT, after the treatment, if, the, if there is a residual mass in the CT images, we should uh, very say uh, very careful we, we should uh, very carefully observe the patient because if the patient have, uh, even though if the patient have a PET negative after the, in FTG PET after the treatment, if there is a residual mass more than two centimeter, um, this patient, the patient have a very uh, lower survival compared to other patients. So we should very careful uh, to interpret pay, uh, uh, evaluate the patient, even though the patient has the FTG PET negative finding after the treatment. <clears throat> and also I would like to um, uh, briefly introduce the FAPI PET for the lymphoma. Um, as you know, the FAPI PET is uh, the PET, a new tra PET tracer agent which target fibros fibros fibroblast activation protein, uh, which exists in the cancer associated fibroblast. So it is, um, it has, it shows the like um, uh, very um, emerging role for the assessment of the, of the oncology imaging. And also, however, um, some reports that the um, article say that the FAPI pad has a limited role in the assess, uh, evaluating lymphoma. Uh, as you can see in these images, actually this um, patient has a DLB, DLBCL, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and FDG pads show very, very high uptake uh, in, uh, of this uh, lymphoma involvement. But this, the same patient also take a FAPI pad, but the FAPI pad show very, very low uptake in the lymphoma involvement regions. So, um, so some maybe the lymphoma, the FAPI pad has a limited role for the evaluation of the lymphoma patients. 
Well, and this is the another uh, paper which showed the puppy pig pet, pet uptake in the lymphoma. And as you can see in this figure, um, the, the different type of lymphoma show different um, um, uptake, FDG ability to the lymphoma lesions. So um, like this kind, so there's a very a various type of lymphoma and a various kind of avidity. And also um, this uh, aggressive type of, of the lymphoma has a um, high but, uh, immuno chemistry, a, a positive binding in the immunohistochemistry, but the indolent type have a low um, staining for the pop lesion of lower staining um, result for the fat. So, um, so the further study uh, is required for the assessment of lymphoma lesion in by using the FAPI pet. So, and for the further research are the required. So in the today's lecture, uh, we uh, I uh, introduce uh, the clinical indication of the FDG PET in lymphoma, and also I um, introduce the uh, explain the lymphoma staging and response of it assessment um, based on the Enable classification and Dovel five point scale and Lugano classification. Also, I uh, in, um, explain the RIRIC and ratio uh, uh, criteria, which is um, which uh, helps the treatment response uh, decisions after the immunotherapy. And also I um, explain the FDG avidity of lymphoma. And I'll, I also uh, briefly explain the limitation of Dovil five point scale, the three, the score three. And I also uh, briefly show you the FAPI PET imaging for the lymphoma. <clears throat> so this is the end of today's lecture. And um, if you, uh, do you have any questions? Please leave the question in the chatting messages. Thank you for your attention.